Hey everyone, we are back again with another video detailing our circumnavigation of Vancouver Island aboard our 37-foot sailboat Maya. In previous videos, we've traveled 477 miles over 70 days to where we are now in Columbia Cove. In the last episode, we rounded Brooks Peninsula, a major milestone for this trip and for us. In the previous episode, we also learned that fishing is much harder than it looks. First attempt resulted in this lure getting it all tangled up. This is the biggest, nastiest, oh, not. Picking back up the story, we continue south from Columbia Cove towards our destination, Dixie Cove. With our fishing line back in working order, we came across about 20 boats trolling in a small channel. Naturally, we threw the lure overboard and shortly after, Whoa, that was just pandemonium. This is the biggest fish we have ever caught. Oh my god. Ooh, nice job, Matt. Alright, this one up here. Up here. Up here. Woo! That is. Oh my god. That's a freaking fish. Oh my god. Let's get out of here. Wow. That is a keeper. Jeez. All right, we have a salmon. Oh my gosh, it's huge. It's amazing. <laughs> king salmon. Oh. Gonna be eating like kings for days. Woo. First salmon. Yes, you did it. Mac thought we got caught on the bottom. This is like Rod just straight down. <laughs> Okay, this is our first attempt at filleting a salmon. This is the first steak. It's not a very pretty cut, but... Well, we've never done this before. Yeah. But, I mean, look at the, look at the size of that thing. I'm going to try to cut off a little more on him. Hey, there's so much. Oh, it's going to be delicious. We just got done playing the fish, the first salmon that we've ever caught. So, and then I cut open his stomach, and I couldn't believe it. No wonder people fish with hoochies, because that is definitely what they eat, these little squid things. He had three of those in his stomach. And this is about the size of our lure. And I'm going to go to the bait shop, and I'm going to go get some hoochies that have some pink flecks in them, because that is what this guy's been eating. All right, let's get this guy in the crab trap. Yep. Catch some let's more food. It. That's right. We're going to go see what's happening on the ocean floor in the crab trap. So here we go. Sorry about being upside down. I'll fix that. Here, I'll just fix it now. As you can see here, we are using the salmon carcass as crab bait. This is in about 30 feet of water. Almost immediately the crab showed up. As you can tell, crab loves salmon. We got three Dungeness crabs out of this trap. Add in the salmon we caught and it was the most epic day of fishing we've ever experienced. Being able to live off the sea and eat really well is one of our favorite parts about cruising in British Columbia. Now back to the story. We were anchored in Dixie Cove when we received news of a major storm front coming in. Wanting to make some progress south, we opted to travel to Queen Cove, approximately 30 miles away. As expected, the gale came in, but we were already safely anchored in Queen Cove. With time to kill, we opted to knock out some overdue boat projects. We are in Queen Cove, which is near Nuka Island. And we are just going to wait out some weather. There's supposed to be a big low pressure system coming through. So. But the next 24 hours brings another system with more rain. So, so this is going to blow like 30 to 40, just a couple miles out in the strait. So, so this is extremely unusual. So we do not want to be out there then. Yeah, so we're going to hang out here and get some boat work done. Yep. Always nice doing it in beautiful places. Today we are going to epoxy some little holes. 
They are the remains of where an old piece of starboard used to be. And so we took those off and repurposed them to our little back bench cockpit seat here. And so now we just need to fill in the holes that remain from where the old one was. Next, we took a, a composites class at the local community college near our marina. And we did this exact thing. So we practiced filling holes and now we're going to do it on the real thing on our own boat. So we'll see how this goes. Put in some resin. I'm going to put in equal amount of the hardener. Now we're just mixing this up. So we're going to put in a little bit of this thickener into it. It's windy. We've got a gust coming. Okay, this looks pretty thick. Number two. The best part. Scratching it off the list. So satisfying. There's a list growing over here. Oh boy, these are bigger jobs. Oh yeah. Hey -oh. After completing our boat projects, we relaxed for a few days while we waited out the windstorm. Once the wind subsided, we had a decision to make. Nootka Island is a large island directly west of Vancouver Island, providing an inside passage on its northern shore. From our previous experiences along the coast, we thought it wise to use the more protected inside passage Nuka Island provided. Additionally, on the inside route, there were two settlements, Zabalos and Tassis. Opting for the inside passage, we made our way to Zabalos, only to find a tough anchoring situation. How shallow is it? Oh, now I can touch. Okay. All right, so it's... So. <laughs> yeah. Not a whole lot of margin for error there, and we're... Yeah. Ooh, seeing two feet under the keel is scary. <laughs> just a little too close for us. Yeah, it just drops off dramatically, just so. We're, yeah, we're just like right on the ledge. Yeah, this is probably the closest margin of error, yeah. I suppose, that we've had to, as far as anchoring goes. Right. We're going to monitor the situation closely. Yep. While there wasn't a whole lot to see in Zabalos on shore, the docks were full of commercial fishing boats. This is pretty cool. So this is like the fishing fleet here. There's like just incredible fishing around here and it shows because let's look at all these just awesome boats. And then the fish processing plant is like right there. Actually right, yeah, it's right there. Very cool. Well, we tried to anchor in Zabalos, and there's really not much space to anchor. It pretty much just drops off, and the wind, we were worried about the wind picking up. We are like, oh, it'll be fine, you know, it was calm when we anchored, and now the wind's picked up. We, we only we had, had four feet under our keel, so that was just a little too close for comfort, and if we drag even a little bit overnight, we're going to be on the shore and that would be very unfortunate so instead of taking that chance it's only like five o'clock in the evening we've got plenty of daylight we're going to go try a different anchorage and hopefully that'll work out what we found was another difficult anchoring situation but we didn't like our spot in zabalos so we moved to another bay but unfortunately the water that we're in we're in here it is super deep. Uh, we did find a little place to set the anchor, but the swing room would not allow us to go. I mean, we couldn't swing into shore there. So Jenny is running a line to shore. We're going to stern tie. That line is attached to the end of the boat here. And that'll make it so we don't swing over uh, into shore. So not the best anchoring setup, but surely better than after a peaceful evening, the following morning we got ready to head to Tassus. 
they were just about to leave and then I was getting the stern tie and we made the biggest boo-boo this line accidentally got wrapped around the prop Jack is getting his wetsuit on he's about to go diving yeah, the boat, we turned it on and it was in reverse for some reason. So we just started backing up and we have a stern line. The stern line just got caught, seized up the engine. The engine just shut off right away. So yeah, we're gonna just see what happens. Can you zip me up? Yeah, this is the first time this has ever happened. Pretty bad? Uh, I don't think so. It looks pretty straightforward to a dude. I'll probably be more slack. In the line? Yeah. Do you want me to like go undo the stern tie then? Yeah. Okay. All right, we're free. Just kind of shredded off the first layer of the rope down there. But I'm no longer wrapped around the prop. Yeah, I was not expecting that today. Well, let's see if the engine will turn on now. After that small hitch, we got underway to Tassus. Yeah, it's a pretty wet late oh, July. Oh my God, I think it is raining so hard. Yeah, you look soaked. Because if I wasn't wet enough this morning, swimming in the water, but we should, we're like, what, four miles or so, maybe even less than that to Tassus, so we're going to spend the night at the marina. Yeah, just dry off. Enjoy some amenities? Yeah, hopefully some amenities. Hopefully more amenities in Zavala's. Westview Marina in Tassus. There's Maya, the only sailboat at the dock. Tassus is a sports fisherman's paradise. People come from around the world to fish here, and the marina is set up just for them. While we thoroughly enjoyed the amenities in Tassus, after one night we decided to head south to the southern tip of Nootka Island. We made it to Friendly Cove in time to go on a hike and watch the sunset over the mighty Pacific from the west shore of Nootka Island. This is a good place to stop for now. Please join us next time as we continue our journey south along Vancouver Island's west coast, fishing along the way. And we encounter what will end up being the trip's biggest storm. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Cheers. discovered this yet we've been on this boat forever and we didn't know this was a perfectly sized hat <laughs> we have four hats aboard <laughs> <laughs>
style. You Matt know. cast for his hat and I threw him the closest thing I could find. <laughs> when you sail, you have to wear a proper hat. <laughs>